Okay, this should be working. Um, and I will adjust my posture in some way because I'm not comfortable. But it's okay. In a sense, we may be able to use that. That's part of the image. <laughs> it's part of the image. It's not a it's not a it's not a very comfortable image, right? Like like it it's an it's a sort of it's an image that's in an uncomfortable position, an uncomfortable situation. But what's happening to it? Right? What what's what's happening in this image? Let's have a look. We have some sort of a situation, right? Where we have Wario uh, in a situation and then everyone else looking at him and everyone else sort of uh, worrying about him, I suppose. So people are worrying about him. People are worrying about Wario. Uh, Wario's in the middle of the picture, of the image. And that's more or less what's happening. It's happening in a factory of some kind. It's sort of like a pretty empty desolate-ish kind of factory but uh if 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 we were to look at the situation like what what exactly is happening here uh the the, the first thing that comes to mind is well luigi is in center stage we're seeing luigi it's it's clear right he's sort of in control of the situation more or less and everyone else is looking at him more or less not everyone and and so he's being singled out as okay something is happening it has to do with luigi luigi seems to have been the one i suppose who has moved the levers and and has caused wario to be in this uh you know like this so the the, the sense you get from the look on his face is that he's trying to solve the situation he's trying to heal it and to solve it in some way for help even though he was the one who caused it okay there is fear in his face a certain kind of worry and fear I, I, this is interesting to me because luigi is is has ended up being associated with fear with the Luigi's Mansion series, right? The Luigi's someone who's like afraid. And therefore, it's like the game says, because Luigi's someone who's afraid, he's someone who gets into frightening situations. And this sort of, you could always say that this is part of it. Like, even though this game probably came out way before Luigi's Mansion, right? This is a, uh, this is a Nintendo 64. I, I imagine this is Mar Mario Party 1, I think. Even though this is way before, it's already beginning the tradition of saying Luigi is someone who gets into frightening situations that he can't quite control. Mm, and... Right? It's just that here it's not paranormal. It's not ghosts. It's still a sort of eerie factory. They've painted a bunch of fog or mist into it to make it look eerie. So it's a sort of derelict factory or a very abandonedish kind of factory. It's like they, they're at a factory when they shouldn't be there, right? It's like the factory's closed to the public, but they, they've entered it. And they've messed things up, and it's Luigi's fault, uh, right? That, at least the painting is saying that is saying it's Luigi. Why? Like the funny thing is that th this is this is something that ends up happening. I think mainly because of Luigi's relationship as Mario's brother, right? Like Luigi is Mario's brother. He's Mario's brother, but he can't quite do what Mario does. So he's less uh, brave than Mario. I think that's the, the, the image that gets given throughout the Mario series in different like promotional materials and jokes and, um, and just instruction manuals and things like that. You get the sense that, okay, Luigi is, is more afraid of doing the things that Mario does. 
than Mario is. Uh, right? This becomes a big in-joke and it ends up getting actually referenced by the Mario series until we reach games like Luigi's Mansion and, I don't know, um, I think Paper Mario has a lot of jokes about that as well. Um, right? Stuff like that. But, so, the sense is that Luigi is afraid because he's afraid to do the things that Mario does. I like the fact that even though it's a fear that originates as a pretty psychological fear, a fear of, of, um, of a complex, it's, it's a complex in relationship to Mario, um, that gets completely transformed into a, a fear, a fear of the paranormal, right? ghosts and scary situations. This, this, a dramatic situation, comes into the picture when it, it, does, it wasn't the original point of Luigi's fear. Luigi's fear starts, I think, being defined as, oh, I'm... I'm not as courageous as Mario. As a way of saying, Mario is very courageous. Mar Mario is very courageous. Mario goes on a lot of adventures and saves everyone. Luigi doesn't. He stays home. He's a bit more afraid. But he's also jealous. So there's a sense of like, is he not getting to go on adventures? Or is he getting the opportunity of going but is actually afraid? I think that's also part of it. It's both things at the same time. It's simultaneously that Luigi doesn't get the spotlight. Luigi doesn't get the opportunity to go on an adventure. And that Luigi can't. Because he doesn't um, break through his fear in the way that Mario does. So it, it's simultaneously like he serves as a, sort of a, as a way to bolster up Mario's ego. And at the same time, maybe he also actually, in a real way, lacks that courage mm. to, 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 to get into difficult situations and tackle them. Okay, but, so, so that kind of a fear, that kind of a comparative fear, ends up sort of vanishing it transforms into something so much bigger which is luigi's fear of ghosts which and again the point being i think and i'm sorry for wasting so much time on this but the, the point is that luigi being afraid of ghosts is 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 uh, natural is very natural like the the player can identify with that like if we were in a house full of ghosts we would probably also be afraid, right? It's it's a, a natural sort of fear to have. Um, oops, my cat. Okay. Well, I don't know. <clears throat> okay, so this should be working. Uh, yes, so I suppose what I was saying was just that Luigi's fear then becomes something that, that we would all be afraid of. Ghosts are something that we would all be afraid of. Mm. So it's no longer, it stops being about, oh, Luigi is so afraid of stuff. You know, look at him being afraid of, of everything and things. It becomes more like, no, Luigi is someone who experiences fear a lot. He gets into situations that bring him fear a lot. You know? So it's no longer about him. It's more about the situations he's in. Mm. So, and then Luigi's Mansion becomes very symbolic about Mario's presence. Mario becomes almost like a sort of a, an icon in Luigi's Mansion. Uh, he's, he's like also trapped within a statue or within a painting in the mansion as if he's like a, a religious figure that's 
that Luigi is praying to that's in the center of this mansion or something. So, the re okay, so why am I saying this? Mm, because I think this is where scenes like this come from or where they're leading to. We have Luigi in, in a scary situation. He's found himself in a scary situation. What it involves is that it, 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 it's put Wario in danger. Wario's in danger. And Wario's in danger because Luigi has put him in danger. Okay. Now Wario's in the center of this scene as someone who's been put in danger. And he's been put in danger by Luigi. Wario's danger is um, what... <laughs> Wario's danger is what Luigi is afraid of. Luigi is afraid of Wario's danger. Luigi wishes that the situation weren't disrupted, that it hadn't been disrupted, but it has. And now he's like, how do I fix this? This is interesting in one way, because you could almost say that, that then Wario is the disruption in this picture. It's not just that Wario has been put into a disruptive position that, that causes Luigi to feel fear, but that Wario's presence is the disruptive position. It's almost like Wario is someone who dangles from a crane, from a dangerous place. Wario is someone who's constantly in a dangerous position. Uh, in a sense, like I've said in other videos, like th this might have something to do with why Wario is the character who eventually doesn't die. He doesn't die in Wario games. He eventually becomes this kind of a character because no matter how much he gets hurt and no matter how dangerous the situation he gets into, he doesn't die. In fact, it almost gets turned on its head and Wario getting into dangerous situations becomes the way in which Wario uh, plays, you know. Wario needs to get hurt by the enemies in order to sort of uh, use that hurt in a way that helps him solve the situations, you know. Like he gets burned, he gets frozen and stuff like that and this is precisely the, what allows him to move through the level. So it's like Wario is in danger. Wario is someone who's like permanently in a state of risk. His life is constantly at risk. It almost is the nature of his being. And and so it, it, it's curious to me that that would be maybe what's happening in this image. Wario's in danger, and this is what's happening. This is what's disrupting the picture. Wario's appearance disrupts the picture. Because after all, Wario is, um, in some way you could say that the problem with Wario <laughs> is that he's a shadow to Mario. He's like some sort of a doppelganger, evil version of Mario. You know, Mario's shadow. But then that kind of that kind of plays with things because Luigi was Mario's shadow originally, you could say, maybe. You know? Like, we had Mario red, we had Luigi green. You know, the, the, the Mario is short, Luigi is tall. They played this yin yang duality of opposites thing from the beginning. So, you know, Mario is full of courage, Luigi isn't full of courage. Like, th th there's, this is the nature of their relationship, is to be opposite sides of the same coin. Mario and Luigi are opposite sides of the same coin, and in that way, they are each other's shadow. They are each other's dark side, each other's opposite, and have been. But then, something happens. Wario gets introduced into the series. And Wario's introduction to the series is a danger, is a constant danger. There is something about Wario that's not like Luigi. Wario is some sort of an aspect 
of the Mario persona that is different. Uh, you know, he represents a shadow aspect to Mario that's different to the shadow aspect that Luigi represents. He's a different aspect. Um, in a sense, maybe you could say that uh, the, the, excuse me, okay, I lost my train of thought a little bit there, but in, in a sense, therefore, you could say that the, the difference, the main difference that I see is that Wario, ha there's a certain enjoyment, right? Isn't that it? There is a certain enjoyment in Wario. He, he enjoys getting uh, burnt. He, he enjoys getting frozen. He doesn't just enjoy money, pleasure, food, sex. He doesn't just enjoy all the things that the other characters enjoy. He also enjoys everything that the other characters don't enjoy. Uh, he enjoys getting hurt. He enjoys all the stuff that, that helps him attain his goal. Like, all this stuff helps him attain his goal. There is, like... Nothing that doesn't help him attain his goal in some weird way. And that sets him in opposition to Mario and Luigi. Uh, right? Because the Mario-Luigi duality is a different duality. It's a duality between Luigi, you know, fear, not enjoying things, and Mario, yes, enjoying things. You know, being more vital in that way. Yeah, again, that's how it's presented. I don't think that's that's true necessarily. I don't know what Luigi is like <laughs> in that way. But but we're playing with uh, ideas here, with these ideas. Yes, Luigi, like fear, pain, let's say, sadness, sorrow, Mario, vitality, happiness, joy. So that was the original yin-yang. But then Wario is, is a different thing. There's a different duality. You know? So I think maybe Wario is that disruption between uh, these two. He stands between the two. He stands between Mario and Luigi. Mario and Luigi are looking at each other in opposite sides of the space. You see? Luigi is here on one side, and Mario is on the opposite uh, side. He's on an opposite balcony. They're in opposing balconies elevated from the rest but opposing balconies and then Wario stands between them so that's one of the things that's happening uh, okay I think we should look at these guys just for a second because otherwise we wouldn't say anything about them um, okay so then here we have <laughs> here we have Peach Princess Peach uh, and Donkey Kong. And Donkey Kong. And in the middle of them, in between them, there is Yoshi. It's weird. What are these guys doing here? Why are they here? Like, what, what exactly is happening? <laughs> uh, well, we have Peach. We have Donkey Kong. Uh, in some way, like... We could say, okay, there's something very clear that's happening materially that we could talk about, which is Donkey Kong is holding up a sort of some construction pipes on a platform that we can get, we get the impression that this was what was meant to be attached to the crane, right? Like the crane was supposed to grab this and elevate it, and instead, Wario has been elevated. Okay. Uh, so, so Donkey Kong is signaling this. It's like, this is what should have been elevated. This is the, the, the other thing that should have been elevated and not Wario. Okay, what does that mean? <laughs> I don't know. But that's something that's happening. Uh, Yoshi is extending his hand up. What does that mean? <laughs> is he trying to help Wario, right? Is he just trying to help uh, with his hand? 
And then Princess Peach is worried. Princess Peach is worried about what's happening and worried about Wario being up in the sky. So a lot of stuff, obviously, is going on there. Um, <laughs> let's return up to these guys up at the top. Wario is looking at Luigi and is, is sort of like pointing a finger. He's saying, he's accusing Luigi. So in a sense, that's also the worry in Luigi's face, I think, is a, a sense of, um, of guilt. And Wario is like the finger, the, the guilty, you know, the, the, the guilt pointing finger. So that there is a sense of like, oh no, you know, I, I, I shouldn't have done this or I shouldn't be doing this. Um, let's remember that that's part of what Luigi's fear was about. Luigi's fear was about, I'm not like others. I'm not like Mario. Mario does things this way. I do them this other way. And I'm not able to do them this other way. I'm not able to do them like Mario. And so there's a sense of, oh, this thing that I've done, it's not Mario-like enough. This is so interesting because that's, in a sense, that's what Lu Luigi and Wario have in common, is that both of their storylines end up uh, echoing themes of inferiority towards Mario or comparing themselves to Mario. Maybe not inferiority, but there is a sense of like everything that they do always ends up having Mario as a stat, as a as a measuring rod or as a figure. <laughs> um, Wario begins his adventures in Wario Land One, wanting to be like Mario. He wants a castle like Mario's castle. He wants. Uh, like, he wants a statue of Peach. Mm, no, he doesn't want a statue of Peach. But anyway, like, he wants to be like Mario. He wants to have a castle like Mar Mario does. And in fact, that's why, uh, right, he steals Mario's castle in Mario Land 2, in the six golden coins. He steals Mario's castle in order to, like, replace him, you know? That sets up some of the shadow stuff as well, because Wario becomes the Mario Castle lord, the owner of Mario Castle. It's like, it's Mario's castle, but it's presided by someone who's like, who's like a, a, um, an evil doppelganger. But, but, but so for Wario, what that means is, Everything he wants seems to be to be Mario. He wants to be like Mario. He wants to have what Mario has. He wants it. He wants it. He desires it. He desires to be like Mario. Whereas Luigi is afraid of not being like Mario. He's afraid of not being enough like Mario. Like, the way I act is not the way that Mario would act. And therefore I feel bad so there's a guilt of like oh uh, you know i'm not look at me being all clumsy and not mario like you know oh no and then wario's like dun <laughs> you know like wario's like it's the eye of fear it's like luigi's fear in a sense maybe that's why wario appears in the scene wario is a materialization of luigi's fear in a sense of like what Luigi's afraid of. Luigi's afraid of um what is he I was gonna say pleasure. I don't know if that's what he's afraid of. I think Luigi's afraid of pleasure. Of this complete like mm, uh enjoyment that Wario has. You know, which in turn is a part of Mario's psychology that Mario is kind of hiding as well. Mario is not fully expressing it. Wario comes to express it. Uh, so, so maybe that's why Luigi feels guilty. And therefore, that's why Luigi has something to do with a lack of courage and fear. Wario expresses that. 
That is to say, Wario serves as a materialization of the cause of Luigi's fear. Why is Luigi afraid? Because someone is pointing at him and telling him, you're not like Mario enough. And the person who pointed him symbolically, right, in this structure, in this narrative, is Wario. Wario is the one who, who, who reminds Luigi that he's not Mario enough. Does that mean that Luigi mainly feels that he's not Mario enough because he doesn't enjoy what he does? You know what I mean? Like maybe the fact that he doesn't enjoy what he does reminds him that he's not like Mario enough. You know what I mean? Like maybe it's something along those lines. Uh, okay. So there's probably a lot more to say about this image. I mean, I, I would, I think so. Pretty sure there is, but uh, I would like to stop here because I think that um, I need to process it and talk about it again in another at another moment. Um, yeah, so that's it. Let's leave it here for the moment and see if I come back to it at some other point. So, thanks. Yes. Goodbye.